So now for the last problem, this problem is really involved. I'm just going to let you guys know there is a shortcut, which I will mention at the end. Um, I mean, if you choose to just skip to it, it's okay. Uh, but if you care to see the whole process or just skim through it, because honestly, this is really um, annoying. Uh, but in this case, unlike the last problem, you have two unknowns. When you have two unknowns, you need two equations. So by simply getting the equation for conservation of momentum, that wouldn't be enough because we have two unknown variables. So we need a second equation. And for that, we then use conservation of energy to get us there. So let's go back to the problem. And what we can see is that I drew out the two scenarios. Uh, the first scenario before they collided and the second scenario uh, once they clashed. Uh, for this problem, let's read it. A bowling ball with a mass of 3.81 kilograms is rolling without slipping at 4.96 meters per second when it collides with a stationary bowling pin that has a mass of 1.52 kilograms. What is the final speed of the bowling ball if the collision is elastic? So again, this term elastic means that the objects do not stick to each other. They bounce off of each other or push each other in whatever direction without sticking. So I might change the notation I have here and I'll explain as I do that. So first and foremost, let's get conservation of, of momentum equation. So I'm going to use blue for that. So there is only one momentum, which is the first one. The second object is stationary, so its velocity is zero, meaning it has no momentum. So just remember that. So m1, v1. Also, apologies for the delay in my writing. I know when the video gets recorded, it like delays it slightly. So if that gets annoying, I apologize, honestly. I wish there was a better method without it, without that delay. So we have the momentum for the first object. In this first scenario, the second object does not have momentum. So that is it. That is equal to the total momentum of the second scenario. Here, we don't know which way the objects are going to move. And like last problem, we just made both of them uh, positive. And if it turns out that they're negative, the signs will switch. Okay. So mass one times. So now I'm going to call it V3. I'm going to make a note of that. Oops, that, that's really. This mass is going to have a velocity of V3, and this second mass is going to have a velocity of V4. Just V1, V2, V3, V4. It helps distinguish them better. So V1, V3 plus mass 2, V4. Like that, we don't get any confusions with any other things. OK, so we have this first equation. We kind of did it with the last problem. And that's why I wanted to do that first problem before jumping into this one. Now we're going to introduce conservation of energy. It's going to be the same thing as momentum. Anything that's in motion is going to have kinetic energy. Anything that is not will not. There is no potential energy that we have to use for this problem because everything is on a flat surface. So we just add all the energies for the first scenario. For the first scenario, there is only this right there. This doesn't have any kinetic energy. So we're going to write 1 half m1 v1 squared. So that's the equation for kinetic energy. And there's no 1 half mv squared for the second because there's no motion. So that is it for the first scenario. For the second scenario, we're going to write the kinetic energy for both of these objects because we assume they're both moving. 1 half m1 v3 squared plus 1 half m1. I mean, it's m2 v4 squared. So you can see how like the notation can get really confusing right away. So just making sure to denote everything properly is key to this. Okay, so we have two equations. What I'm going to do is we are trying to solve for this, for v3. We want to find this answer. We do not care for v4. So what we want to do is use the first equation to substitute it into the second one 
to get rid of V4. So what that means is we need the first equation equal to V4. So you can replace V4 with terms that aren't V4. So let me write that out with this. I'm going to use green. So what this means is I want V4 isolated. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So using the first, the first equation, M1, V1 minus M1, V3. At any point, if there's any questions with the problem, like specific steps that don't seem logical or I skipped ahead too much, comment down below wherever this is at and I will answer your questions or clarify certain concepts or steps. So you subtract that and then you have M2, V4. What I'm gonna do now is divide M2 to both sides, M2. You can simply put it in one or the other. I'm just choosing to do this for right now. So what we get is that V4 is equal to all of this right here. Um, I'm just gonna make it all into one thing. I, I should have done that from the beginning. M1, V1 minus M1, V3. Okay, there we go. Just making sure everything's proper. Cool, V3, V1, V2. The three looks bad, but we have that, okay. The reason we did this is because we need to get rid of V4. We don't have this information and we don't need it for the answer. We need V3. So I have to make everything equal to this. So now I can get this and put it in here, right there. If we replace that, we get rid of that V4 dependence and voila, we are almost there, sort of. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so let's move this in that direction. We're gonna be moving this way and then down maybe. Sorry, I don't know which way, my, my finger always points mirrored image, so it might seem like I'm pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna replace this here. Uh, let me draw a black line right there to separate the, the whole situation. So I'm gonna, okay, first what I'm gonna do is cancel out the one half terms because each one has it, so it just, seems redundant to have to rewrite it. So M1, V1 squared is equal to M1, V3 squared plus M2. Instead of V4, I'm going to put this new equation, or not new, but the first equation into there that we rearranged. We're gonna have, see, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this lasso effect. And I'm gonna copy it. Copy, I'm gonna paste over here. So now we're gonna have pretty much M2 and I'm gonna put this, oh no, that's not what I meant to do, okay. I'm going to get this. Oh, no. What did I do? I went all the way to the top. Sorry for that confusion. Back to this. Um, we're going to put this because this term is all V4 right here. We're just replacing it into here. So that means we cannot forget the square like that. And then just make sure we haven't missed anything. Nope, we're good. So we're literally throwing that right in there and having that squared term. Okay, so before we move on any further, I just have to explain where we're going with this because if I just start going into steps, it, you might be like, how do you know we have to do this? So this problem gets really complex because it ends up giving us, um, it gives us V3 in, in squared form, in linear, like just V3 by itself or terms without V3. So when you get that situation, we need to use a quadratic equation. So before I even like ex extrapolate, extrapolate all of this, let me write that equation down. So when we can rewrite this equation like this, in this format, where A, B, and C are just numbers and in this case, 
x squared x would represent v3 squared v3 without the squared and another term without any v3 then we can get whatever values we have for the coefficients a b and c and we can plug this all into the quadratic equation negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and that gives you your v3 so that's what we have to do because th that's the only way to solve this problem uh, i mean unless you derive the simplistic form to get the answer but uh, what we have to do now is foil this whole thing out stretch it out and rearrange terms to get us to that quadratic equation i'm sorry for that okay so uh this is why this problem gets really tedious uh so what we need to do here is expand the squared so i'm gonna focus on just this term right here oh sorry got the hiccups Ooh. okay uh, do, 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 do. let me just make sure everything's good. okay so uh m squared so it's going to be m1 v1 minus m1 v3 and since we're squaring it we just do the same term within the parentheses and it, it can get really uh, confusing if we don't label our terms properly so m2 squared what you can see here is that you can cancel the squared and cancel this one see there's two m terms m2s and you can cancel this one and cancel one from down here so you're left with just one okay so see this is a little bit more simplistic now what we want to do is foil so essentially what that means is multiply this term times this one then this term times that one and then this term times this one and then this one times that one and when we do that we've uh decompress everything stretch everything out so that it doesn't have to be in parentheses anymore so um m1 v1 and then times that it means just squared so squared squared okay so that's m1 cool now this times that so there's a negative sign so don't forget to include that there's m1 i'm gonna put squared because there's two of them but the v's are different so v1 v3 okay now on to this term times that one there's a negative sign so is that and there's two m1 so m1 squared and the v1 and the v3 are separate so v1 v3 you can already see these two are the same term so we can combine them eventually and then lastly we have these two they're both negative so they end up becoming positive you have m1 squared times v3 squared like that okay and then let me just double check something out just making sure i'm not making any mistakes as i go along through this yeah and then we good okay so all we have to do now is have the m over 2 divided because what we did was the top so now the denominator we can do this m2 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 like that and that helps give each term its own separate thing without bringing too much confusion okay so now what we have to do is we have only looked at this term right here so we have these two other terms which we haven't included which we will right now um, so m1 v3 squared is equal to m1 v1 squared okay so now we have this oh, why does this keep happening okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to rearrange these terms so we get this situation but for our sake we want v3 squared plus v v3 plus c so any terms with v3 squared we're gonna isolate them any terms with v3 we're gonna isolate and then everything else will isolate in this format so what this means is we have to bring this term to the other side but before we do that let's first start with 
the V3 terms, V3 squared terms. So we have M1 V3 squared. So I'm going to cancel that because I already brought it down. I just want to make sure I, I don't duplicate certain values that I have. Let's look for another V3 squared. So these, this is just V3, not squared. This one's V3. So let's bring this one here. M1 squared V3 squared over M2. Okay. Cancel that out. So all of this is one term. This does nothing to it. It's just to isolate it. So I know that I don't want to mix these with any other terms. Now we're going to look at V3 by itself without a squared. Uh, this one's not, this one's not, these two are. So it's just these two, but these are the same terms and they're both minus. So what we're going to do is make sure I include the minus sign because minus, 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 you get two times this whole thing because you just have two of these same things. M1 squared, V1, V3 over M2. That's that. Okay. Box this up. And then lastly, we have everything else. So I'm going to cancel these out. So all we have left are these two terms. See, that's why canceling these things out helps, um, at least visually. So this one, we have to subtract it to the other side. So that's going to be negative. But I'm going to write this first term. First, m1 squared, v1 squared, divided by m2, minus whatever that is, m1, v1 squared, m1, v1 squared. So this is v1. We have the value for v1. Okay, oops, that was not beautiful. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we have this. We're almost there. Uh, what we have to do is pull out the v3 terms from this first section. I'm going to pull it out the other way, like v3 squared. And in this bracket, we're going to have whatever else is left over. So if we pull out the V3 squared, we only have M1. Plus, this term only has the masses M1 squared divided by M2, like that. Okay. And the math adds up. Um, definitely does. Uh, we have cool. Because you have this, that. Mass, yeah. Okay, awesome sauce. Minus this. We're going to parentheses this or bracket it. If we pull out the V3, see now is a term without the square and leave everything else in here. 2M1 squared V1 divided by M2. We have all of these terms. So these are just numbers now. They're gonna they're gonna represent our a, B, and C. Oh, A, B, and C. Sorry, that was, I don't know why it blacks out like that. Okay. Plus, everything here we know. So we're simply just going to replace that with the value. Whatever that is. We know what M1 is. We know what V1 is squared. We know what M2 is. We know what M1. Was that? Oh, let me just make sure. Yeah, it's supposed to be M1, V2, V1 squared. So we have all of this down. And this doesn't have a coefficient, as you saw. So now we have our A, we have our B, and we have our C. All we have to do now is find the values for each three of these, of these three terms, and then plug everything into our quadratic equation. Square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2a. So b's, b's, a's, c's, a's. And then that equals our v3. And that's how we get there. Um, it's a pain in the butt. It takes a few steps and it can be really easy to get it wrong if you like one little mistake. But essentially we're going to get our answers and plug it into here to get our v3. This will give us two solutions because you solve it for the plus and then you solve it for the minus and uh, only one of those answers is correct. Uh, and so you'll just plug that into uh, your, your canvas problem. And usually you can determine which one's the right answer because 
the bowling ball, depending on the situation, should be moving forward. So the positive one can be the will be the answer. If both of them are positive, then it's just a guessing game. Uh, but don't worry for exams, you're not gonna have this. <laughs> but anyways, once you plug everything in here and you rework everything, what you should get is V3 is equal to, and let me, uh, M1 minus M2 times V1 over M1 plus M2, like that. So this going from here to here, oh, I should have. Sorry, my eraser won't change. I'll just have to do it manually. So going from here to here requires us to plug all of these terms without even solving them into here and then cleaning everything up. And that should, once we do that, it should give us that. You don't have to though, that's just to derive this equation. You can just plug in your values and plug it in here, or you can just use this equation. So, um, Oh, there we go. That's a weird, uh, the pen just doesn't want to work. Okay, there we go. And there. So once you plug everything in here, that should give you the right answer. And this removes ambiguity from everything. Uh, but yeah, sorry for that. It's tedious. Uh, it's not going to be on your actual quiz, but I wanted to just work it out in case you wanted to see how it goes. So with that being said, I really hope all of this helps. I know this last part might have put you to sleep, but thank you so much for bearing with me. And if you have any other questions, just let me know uh, if this format gets really annoying. I can try some other format out, uh, but thank you guys for watching. And if you have any other questions, do let me know, comments, email, whatever works for you. Stay safe, everyone. Um, I hope you guys are doing well with this whole situation. Keep your mental sanity in check. So reach out if you guys ever need anything. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.